Pick up your gear and open your chest. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey. It's a brand new day. On the Sword Coast, the allies will help with blades and bows and magic as well. Hey, hey. Heroes on their way. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. Idol champions of the forgotten realms. Idol champions, adventure never ends. Idol champions, did you want a man? Idol champions, you were said again. Idol champions. From water deep to ice and air, head out to show, all shadow fell, hey, hey. Together we stay. Walk to the monsters, walk to the boss, walk to the right, it's never a loss, hey, hey. Bad guys can slay. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. I don't champion. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another edition of uh, Garwar's Guide, the tutorial show. I'm Garwar, I think. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I was having some weird audio issues, so hold on. I'm gonna make a ding noise on my computer. Okay, let's see if that fixes it from my end. Apologies. But I can't go on with that sound anymore. <laughs> Alright. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about Midwinter, uh, Year 5. Which means we're going to be talking about uh, the returning champions Morgane and Talon, and the arriving champion Rust on the Harbor uh, from the outside Xbox crew. Um, so, uh, if you haven't been to one of uh, the Saturday shows before, uh, welcome. Uh, but the way these work is a little different than the Friday show. Um, I will spend the first hour-ish, uh, talking about our topic, uh, and then I will spend the second hour-ish, uh, answering questions. Uh, you're welcome to ask questions during the first hour. Uh, we have Mars in the Mod Pod today. He's going to be pulling questions into a little document for me to see, and then I will be able to address them in the second half. Uh, I am still, uh, eating cough drops like they're candy, so... Apologies if I cough in your ears. <laughs> I will do my best. I will do my best. I got a mute button, but I don't always hit it fast enough. All right. Uh, so, uh, real quick, uh, events in Idle Champions. We'll do the quick little general reminder. Events uh, show up here at the top of the banner. At the top of the campaign banner, Midwinter is the one that we're doing right now. Um, if you don't see it for some reason, uh, restart your client, please. That, that that has to that has to happen. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, and of course, I hit the mute button and it didn't work. So let's let's fix that real quick. You know, it'd be nice if you set a button for muting things and it works across all of your profiles. There. Hey, that worked. All right. Uh, so midwinter, uh, the, the the couple things to remember for new players: um, the adventures that happen in uh, in events 
uh, cost of currency. The currency for this event is gift boxes. Generally speaking, uh, we'll refer to them as uh, event tokens because every event has a different type of currency. Um, so this time it's gift boxes. You earn these at a fixed rate. It's one every 25 seconds. That's server side time. So there isn't anything you can do to speed that up. Um, it is that that's 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 how fast they come in. Doesn't matter how many parties you're running. It doesn't matter if you're using speed potions. Doesn't matter if the client's open or closed. One every 25 seconds. Um, over the course of the event, you will earn enough tokens to do everything, like to unlock, like to complete all the variants, as long as you're completing them on the first try. Because if you fail a variant and you have to do it again, you have to pay again. That's kind of the uh, understood function of events, is everything is gated by currency. Uh, you earn your own kind of uh, favor for an event. Uh, there aren't any blessings or anything you buy with it. It's just you earn the favor and it functions as a way to, to obviously make other uh, other runs easier and let you go further. Um, if you missed it yesterday on GG2E, we did some uh, Azaka gold farming live on stream and I got the 55 gold. Uh, or, well, favor. But yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit. We did real good. Uh, go check out that VOD if you haven't. Uh, so... You click on the adventure node, uh, when you start, there's going to be three base adventures. They're labeled for the champion uh, that they represent. Morgane, Talon, and Rust. Each one uh, is going to have their own formation layout. That's this uh, little picture down here. Uh, this is Morgane's. Morgane's has, uh, it's probably the one I'm going to recommend for deep pushing. Uh, it has a lot of adjacencies here in this big clumped mass. Uh, which makes it nice, and a single tank. That's a little harder for newer players, but great for veterans. Talons is a big uh, circle, and that one's going to be rougher. Uh, I don't recommend pushing for favor with this one. Uh, usually you just want to you want to get favor in one of the other ones, uh, and then just come and do talon stuff, uh, and, then, and then not do that again. Uh, Rust on the Harbor is the newest champion. Uh, theirs is a little more difficult. It's fine for veterans, but it's a little challenge. This one's pretty challenging for newer players. So again, you're probably going to want to focus on more gain uh, because of the layout uh, and the ease with which you can make a, a solid deep pushing formation um, to get your favor. To get your favor. Uh, so along with each one of these, uh, as you do each of the initial adventures, you'll be able to unlock the champion. I've already done that, so they list themselves as free plays. Once they become free plays, uh, if you do them, your reward is a random chest for that champion. Uh, so this is a, if I were to do a, a Rust free play, um, I would earn favor, Eldas favor, but I would also earn uh, either a silver or a gold Rust on the Harbor chest. It's completely random which one you get. It doesn't matter how far you push. You just have to meet the requirement, which is to complete area 50. Uh, this is how you get extra gear for your champions. Because each champion is going to come with three three variants. As I just pop them up. Each of those variants comes with a guaranteed gold chest. So if you want more gear for your champion, you spend your tokens, these gift boxes, on doing free plays. They start off uh, at 500, as you can see here. Um, and they go up by 500 every time you do one. But they cap at 2,500. So the most you're ever going to spend at 2,500. This is far more efficient way to get gear than to spend 10,000 tokens on a chest in the store. And just don't don't buy the ones in the store, folks. Just go run free plays. Um, the odds of getting a gold chest in a free play are about one in three, but it has a pity timer of four, meaning uh, with 10,000 tokens, you're going to get at least one gold chest and three silver chests but you could get up to four gold chests if you get lucky enough. So run your free plays to get to get your gear. Uh, we're going to go over each of the variants uh, for each of the champions. Um, hold on. All right. Starting off with more gain. Uh, first first variant oh I should probably talk uh, well I mean it's kind of gonna come up here should probably talk a little bit about the boss in this event folks uh, the boss of midwinter is called uh, the primary level 50 boss is called the devourer 
Uh, and he sucks. Um, he's no fun. He's no fun. Why is he no fun? He waddles out onto the, onto the screen, uh, takes a second, and then lives up to his name. He literally eats one of your champions whole. Just, just, uh, you go into his, the champion goes into his belly and then there's a little timer, uh, where, uh, you know, if you can kill him before the timer runs out, you'll get your champion back. It's like, you know, slicing them open and they crawl out covered in whatever and come back into the formation. Otherwise they're just gone. Otherwise they're just gone. That's the devourer folks. It's one shot, one shot kill. Um, so midwinter's level 50 boss is a serious damage check. That's, that's what we refer to this. If you can't just nuke it immediately, you're not moving any further. Even if you could kill on the level beyond that and continue to push many levels beyond that, if you can't kill the devourer immediately, you're not, you're not going any further. Um, so you may not get as far in this event as you might in others. And you may need a little more favor uh, to push through variants uh, that you than you might normally be used to because of the devourer. So keep that in mind. Uh, Morgane's uh, variant is called Utterly Devoured. Uh, and with this one, champions devoured by the devourer are devoured. Hey, can we say devourer enough? Forever. Well, that's not necessarily true. Uh, it cannot be used again until you reset. So basically, they're devoured... Uh, and can't be, and, and then they're just gone from your formation. And even if you defeat the devourer after they've been devoured, uh, you don't get them back and you've got to slot somebody else in. Fortunately, you only have to get to 75, right? So you only have to deal with the devourer once. Um, uh, you know, obviously I recommend making sure this shows as, as easy, difficulty easy. That's a favor check. So you just need to get a lot of favor. Uh, I think it's around... I don't know what E3 or E4. Um, it's it's not super rough, but again, you do have to nuke that devour instantly. So be ready for that. Uh, and then once you, with with variants, once you reach the end, once you complete Area 75, just bail. It's it's the it's the unlock adventures and free plays that you want to go as far as possible for favor. Uh, limited resources. Uh, so this variant, only champions in the first bench slot are initially available. Every 10 areas, another bench slot unlocks. So this means you start off with one champion, regardless of how much favor you have. You get one champion for the first 10 levels, two for the next 10, three for the next 10, four, right? You, 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 just, you just very slowly fill up your formation. You're not going to have a full formation until you're 100 levels in. Um, so again, this, this is one of those things where you're going to want to have a little bit of favor to make up for the fact that you can't have a lot of champions in at once. Um, so if, if you're seeing here, the midwinter is very much, uh, kind of balanced towards get, uh, get a lot of extra favor, get a lot of extra favor. One way to make these easier is just, instead of just waiting until only this one shows green and these are still red or whatever, or this one, uh, get, make everything show as green which means get like E8 to E10 favor, then go back and do them, and then you'll just you'll blow right through them. They're not even a challenge then, folks, um, for the most part. Maybe the third one. The third ones might be still be a challenge at that point, but you'll but you'll blow through the first ones. You won't have any major headaches, and it just makes everything easier. I know that's challenging for brand new players. I know getting E8 to E10 favor, scientific notation speak. Um, press Y on your keyboard, and it'll switch. Uh, I know that that can be challenging, so, but just get as much as you can, even if you're saving some of the, uh, of, of the variants until the second week, maybe even the end of the second week, uh, to do them. That's, you know, it's just going to make it a lot easier for you. Careful positioning, the final Morgane variant. Uh, this is the one that's basically, Hey, it's time to learn how to use Morgane. So she starts in the formation and cannot be removed or swapped out. Uh, only more gain and champions buffed by paid up front can deal damage. Paid up front is a is an ability that more gain has. We're going to talk about it here in a bit. Um, it's super adaptable, so it kind of starts off uh, by buffing people who are adjacent to her, but it can be made to buff 
in other ways. So you will have the ability to <coughs> to cough right into a microphone. Apparently, uh, you'll have the ability to adjust it. Just remember that when it first starts out, it's going to be adjacent. So, so uh, again, not not horrible because generally you're going to put your DPS next to next to more gain anyway. Uh, Talon, Talon is now the returning champion for Midwinter. Uh, Talon's first variant, uh, uh, fiendish friends. A collection of fiends spawn in each area while they are alive. The fiends bestow the following buffs to other enemies. So basically, they're just making it harder for you. Um, if it's an imp, enemies drop 99% less gold. If it's a dretch, enemies deal 100% additional damage. If it's an abyssal chicken, enemies move 100% faster. Um, the hardest part of this one, in my opinion, is just is the thing that's easily overcome. And that's enemies drop 99% less gold. Uh, it sounds scary, but it's not. Because we deal with large numbers in this game, 99% uh, more gold just means EO2 uh, less gold. Which means if you just get EO2 more favor, uh, you're fine. So uh, instead of just waiting for this to be green, wait until Once Upon a Gazer is green, and you'll be able to do Fiendish Friends without any, without any actual gold find um, penalty. So, there you go. Once upon a gazer, uh, only champions with wisdom 13 or higher can be used. Gazers spawn in each area. They do not drop gold, nor do they count towards quest progress. Champions hit by a gazer are stunned for 3 seconds. So, you get the, the stat restriction, which is annoying. Um, and you can be stunned uh, for up to 3 seconds if you're hit by, by a gazer. Uh, they're ranged enemies, so, you know. This can this one can be annoying if you're not killing things immediately. Uh, generally speaking, when you look at your uh, when you look at your restriction list, I, I I believe I have that in my guide. Otherwise, there's some fan sites out there. If you look at well, who's available, um, if you if you can't field a full formation, you're going to want at least EO one favor for each empty formation slot or suboptimal formation choice to to help overpower uh, the challenge here. Deadwinter Doge, I mean Dodge. <laughs> that should be another one. Deadwinter Doge, and it's all about a dog. Uh, Talon starts in the formation and can't be moved or removed. So this is the time to use Talon uh, variant. Only champions with dex 14 high or higher and int 12 or higher can be used. That's a double whammy, folks. Um, again, I should have a list for that in my guides on the subreddit. Uh, I should probably put that in chat. Bam. Uh, just find Midwinter, you're five. It'll, it'll say Rust on the Harbor. Uh, actually, you can just click straight on. I have them all listed by champion. You can click straight on Talon and go to their guide. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, this one could be rough. It could be rough depending on your on your bench. Um, you know, what champions you have on your bench. Uh, lots of Lots of favor. That's if, if you're if you're seeing a theme, that's the theme to event variants. Uh, lots of favor. Yes, dead winter doge could be rough. Yeah. Uh, now for rust on the harbors uh, variants, rust is the the newer champion. Their variants are going to be more expensive. They give you discounts uh, on the older champions variants. Uh, it's like twenty five percent of the original cost. So the token costs for these variants are going to be higher. Uh, for this one, Rust begins in the formation and can't be removed or removed. Uh, the Devourer appears as a secondary boss on Area 25. It must be defeated in order to advance. So, again, uh, you only have to get to 75, but you're going to deal with the Devourer three times. Make sure you have a lot of favor going into this. Gold Find is reduced by 99%. Well, make sure that you got even more favor. Um... However, they do give you the, the kind of option. Gold find is increased by 200% for each champion with the gold roll, stacking multiplicatively. Uh, this is just a this is one of the tags for champions. So champions like Rust on the Harbor, who provide gold find for you, uh, will have the gold roll. Um, that doesn't mean necessarily that you want to build a full gold roll formation, because that might not have a lot of power. 
Um, just know that that's going to give you a little bit of a bonus, right? Uh, to hopefully make up for some of that gold find loss. Uh, dead winter drama. Only champions with con 14 or higher can be used. Uh, every area frozen skeleton archers attack a random champion uh, from range. These enemies do not drop gold, nor do they count towards quest progress. These are basically overwhelm uh, type of, of scenarios. Uh, meaning if you don't have a multi-attack champion or an AoE champion, your tank could potentially get overwhelmed and die, right? Uh, if any undead, undead enemy attacks a champion, that champion is stunned for one second. So expect your tank to be stunned since you're dealing with ranged enemies. It's just gonna, it's just gonna happen. Uh, heads or tails is the final variant. Uh, Rust begins in the formation, uh, slot six. Folks, I don't know what that is. They keep putting this number in here, but they don't number the slots on the on the diagram for us, like on the formation layout. So who knows? I mean, you, you'll find out when you go in. But like they tell us this in these in these descriptions, and I don't understand why, because it doesn't mean anything. Uh, you can't be moved or removed. So again, this is another must-use Rust situation. Uh, when Rust is not holding his shiny gold piece, this is one of his abilities. Uh, adjacent champion damage is disabled. Uh, when Rust is holding his shiny gold piece, non-adjacent champion damage is disabled. So, um, usually the goal for Rust, and we're going to talk about Rust in a minute, but usually the goal for Rust is that uh, you want Rust holding his gold piece. So you would want to build your formation in this around Rust holding his gold piece. Uh, that's when he buffs. Um, he has a spec choice that we'll talk about too, a specialization choice, uh, that makes it so that he's pretty much always holding his gold piece. So build it around, uh, when Rust is holding his shiny gold piece, um, so that you're, uh, and make sure your DPS is adjacent to Rust and you should be fine. Should be fine. Uh, let's hop into one of these. We did more gains yesterday. I'm not doing this one. So let's hop into Dead Winter Day for Rust. Uh, and let's get Rust out here. Uh, well, let's do more gain. Let's do Talon. And then we'll get Rust. There we go. Uh, let's spread everybody out. Hey, look at that. They're all in a line. They're all in a line. All right. So... Uh, I guess we'll, we'll do this. We'll do this in the order they arrived. So, Morgane. Morgane joins us from Acquisitions Incorporated. Um, she is a mercenary. She likes to be paid. She likes to be paid. Uh, and that actually functions as part of her role. She support gold. But in this case, the gold role here, this is what we were talking about earlier, um, actually means she takes gold from you. Uh, instead of giving it. Um, now that can be fine. As long as you can put more gain in. And the buffs she provides push you further. Than you normally would get. You'll end up making more gold. Than if you had somebody less powerful. Um, you just have to. You have to figure that out. She's a high elf ranger. Her base ability is rapid shot. She shoots an arrow at a random target. Then quickly follows up with a second arrow. Uh, it really makes me wish she was a DPS. Because of that but. But she's not. Her ultimate is customized arrow. Uh, she pulls a customized arrow from her quiver at random and fires the more powerful enemy or arrow towards a random enemy. Uh, does it list off? Oh, it does not list off the effects. How dare you, game, not give me all the effect details. Uh, hold on, let me bring this up. Because I've got a guide for that. Drink. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. All right. No, that was the wrong one. There we go. All right. So uh, three random enemies. One's called the skull carved arrow. One's called the smoke powder arrow. And one's called the green leaf arrow. The skull uh, the skull carved arrow uh, basically goes through all enemies in a line uh, and hits them all. So think uh, like Zorbu's basic attack, right? 
Smoke Power Arrow uh, explodes on the enemy it hits uh, and does AoE to other nearby enemies. AoE damage. And the Greed Leaf Arrow uh, causes the enemy it hits to take damage over time. So it applies a dot. It applies a dot. Uh, I have that information in my guide, but apparently it isn't in the game. For you to really see. Not, not surprising, folks. That happens a lot. Uh, all right, ability-wise, double tap. If Morgane's first arrow kills their target, the second arrow causes the enemy to drop a second set of gold. Um, this is this is kind of, I think this is why they were like, hey, let's make it a gold champion, but no. Uh, because Morgane, again, Morgane's not the DPS, so this doesn't work except on low levels, and the gold there is... Eh, eh. Paid up front is the big ability that the rest of her kit is built around. Uh, Morgane collects 25% of all gold dropped by enemies, but in turn increases the damage of adjacent champions by a percent. Um, that percent is increased by 5% for each order of magnitude gold that Morgane has collected. The collected gold count persists through resets. So, what is order of magnitude? That's that scientific notation stuff we were talking about. When I say EO1 or EO2 or E10, those are orders of magnitude. So EO1 is one order of magnitude, E10 is ten orders of magnitude. Uh, all time, I have collected, or my high watermark for collecting gold and more gain in, that's actually the more appropriate way to refer to it, uh, is 2.53 E192, so these numbers don't matter, it's the E192 that matters, so I get a 960% bonus. Um, I should have tried, I should have checked yesterday when I was doing, uh, the Zaka farming on stream. The best way to, to boost more gains buff is, um, to put her in for you know, five minutes during some Azaka farming. Uh, when you're when you're farming a num uh, at a gold level that you haven't farmed at before, frankly. Um, so yeah, just something that kind of accrues naturally. Don't really you don't really just put her in formations and let her soak up gold like in gem farming or stuff. She's not gonna make that much money. Doesn't matter. Friends and wealth. Uh, this increases damage of all champions by a hundred percent for each gold find champion in the formation. This is another reason, this is the main reason why they gave her a gold thing. So she can at least buff because she's in. Even if you don't have anybody else. Oh hey, there's the ultimate description. So it is in here, it's just not over here. Alright. Now, uh, Morgane's specializations, she has three. Uh, and they're what make her highly adaptable uh, to any situation, right? So... As we know, when you originally start off, paid up front buffs adjacent champions. But the first uh, set of uh, specialization choices adjusts how that works. We can do find out as, as is, so it continues to apply to adjacent champions. We can use keep your distance, uh, so non-adjacent champions. Monster fodder uh, only applies to champions in front of Morgane. And then stay out of my way is only applies to champions behind Morgane. So you can... You can direct it uh, very specifically um, to help out, uh, you know, your formation. Depending on the formation layout, I'm gonna go keep your distance for a moment. Uh, but then, as we go, we we keep getting more and more specialization choices. So um, there's a set of four here on the second one, and what's gonna happen here is for this second choice. And the third choice, we'll get to pick two from this list. Two from this list. So this changes, uh, this is, these act as modifiers to her paid up front buff. So keep it simple is just a straight up 300% bonus. Tight formation gives it 75% uh, additively for each champion adjacent to more gain. Um, so if you have four adjacencies, it's equal to keep it simple. So... What you look for here is, do you have five or six adjacencies? Uh, and then you might want to do tight formation. Calm under pressure. Uh, this increases the effect of paid up front by 25% by twenty percent for each enemy attacking a champion within two slots of more gain, up to a max of 20 enemies. So this is a ramping buff, uh, which can get up to 400% of a bonus, uh, but only if more gain is within two of your tanks. Tank and or tanks, right? Um, so this is a nice way, so th what we're looking at is total number. So this could be 400, this could be, uh, 600, right? Yeah, no, 450, 450. 
450. This could be 450. This could be 400. So you're looking at like how do you build the best maximum uh, number? Uh, I'm doing math on stream. That's always a bad idea. But it could be up to six. Two is 150. Then times three. That's yeah, 450. 450. Uh, the long game uh, increases the effect of paid up front by 10% for every second that an enemy isn't killed. Up to a max of 60 seconds resets when the enemy is killed. So this one can be 600%. Um, so you're trying to pick the things that are going to give you the maximum buffs if you can if you can make that happen, right? If you can make it happen. So best case scenario would be uh, six adjacencies with tight formation uh, and the long game. That would give you the maximum possible buff. Uh, but that isn't always what you can make happen. So right now, like, I'm going to go keep it simple because she's in the back by herself in this fake uh, formation. Uh, and then on the next round, uh, I'm going to pick the long game, right? Uh, because the other two don't apply. Because the other two don't apply. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's all we get. Yes. Okay. Uh, Gear-wise, she gets two damage all champions items. Uh, she gets a paid up front buff, obviously, because that's the one that you really want. She does get a friends and wealth buff, but again, you're not necessarily building a formation around champions that have a gold roll. That tends to just be something that they kind of happen to have. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then uh, ultimate attack damage and, and ultimate attack uh, cooldown. Uh, feet wise, the, the general stuff you would see for support damage all champions. Then we get, uh, two paid up front ones and friends and wealth. So she's not super deep on the feats, super deep on the feats, uh, just kind of the basics that they figure she would need for this, for this situation. And that's Morgane. Uh, Talon. I'm going to cough again. Right, uh, Talon, unaffiliated. Talon is a tiefling rogue. Uh, runs as a support. Uh, their base attack is a quiet ambush. They disappear into the shadows and stab a random enemy with their rapier. Uh, so you can kind of see, if we watch, you see they'll, they kind of disappear. Boom, and then they're stabbed at somebody from the back. You know, rogue stuff. Rogue stuff. Uh, the ultimate is Razor Edged Chakram. Talon throws a hooped blade, a hoop blade in a large looping arc, damaging all enemies encountered before returning to Talon. Oh, I guess I should fire these off. So here's a here's this arrow. It's you know, it's not super there, it's just it just looks like a big arrow that fires off on the screen. Uh, and then there goes the chakram. Foo, zippy. Zips through everything. Uh, you know, not not a lot going on there graphic-wise, uh, but it happens. Uh, Talon's uh, first ability is Scatter Attacks. You'll see these on the ground after they, they successfully attack someone. Um, when Talon attacks with Quiet Ambush, he leaves behind a set of Scatter Attacks which cause enemies standing on them to be slowed uh, and take more damage from attacks. So this is a debuff. They're, this basically, Scatter Attacks turns their base attack into a debuff attack. Um, and, and anything... and any enemies that also pass through those tacks get debuffed as well. So Talon, uh, for those of you keeping track at home, uh, is one of the, the bigger, uh, you know, uh, or one of the currently meta champions for click debuff formations, for the high-end click debuff formations. Uh, spot weakness, Talon increases the damage of all champions uh, by a percent. This ability is increased by 10% for each enemy killed in the current area, stacking multiplicatively and capping at 25 kills. The effect is reduced by 25% for each slot past one a given champion is away from Talon. This is a roundabout way of saying you want Talon adjacent to your DPS. It's not required, but the further away from your DPS they are, the less they buff with spot weakness. So just put Talon adjacent to your DPS. Uh, so we got, oh, antagonist. Oh, yes. This this one uh, this one upsets some people, but I think it's great. Talon decreases the DPS of evil champions in the formation by 50%, but increases the damage of good champions by 50% for each evil champion 
in the formation, stacking multiplicatively. So it's, an, it's not something you build your formation around, but if you do have evil champions in your formation, a multiple of them, they're probably not really doing much damage, but so they, they shouldn't be. You, you don't want to necessarily want to put as default uh, Talon with uh, evil DPS. That can change with a specialization choice, but just know that Talon buffs good DPS primarily. Um, yeah, that's what you want. Um, and then I guess we'll talk about the specializations right after I call. And I cannot get rid of this strike off. All right. Uh, Pathfinder is the first specialization. This uh, increases the stat cap and damage buff of spot weakness. So generally, if you're pushing like just a regular pushing formation, that's a pretty solid one to go with. Uh, additional scatter tax increases the slow effect radius and damage of scatter tax by 50%. Um, this is the one you tend to do if you're doing click debuff. Uh, reversal of Fortunes is if you're using a, an, an evil DPS. So it reverses the effect of antagonist, decreasing the damage of good champions and increasing the damage of evil champions based on the number of good champions. So Reversal of Fortunes if you're going to use Talon with an evil DPS. Uh, Pathfinder if you're just going to be pushing with them and additional scatter attacks if you're going to do some click debuffy stuff. Uh, I'm going to just choose that one. Not that we're click debuffing on this stream, but... That tends to be what I use Talon the most for. Uh, and that's it. Pretty straightforward. So you want to put them next to your DPS. Uh, and you want to use them with good DPS. That's really what you need to know about how to use Talon. Um, so damage wise, uh, or item wise, uh, damage all champions, a pair of them, damage all champions items, spot weakness. Uh, and scatter tax uh, and antagonist, so you get all three of those. Uh, the, the big important one, in my opinion, is uh, is the scatter tax for click debuff, but the uh, prismatic lamp the, for spot weakness. Slicer and dicer is uh, this one is reduces the cooldown on their ultimate attack, so they don't get ultimate attack damage; they just get the reduction. They just get the the cooldown reduction. Feet wise uh, damage all champions, and then uh, they go into all of it. So we can increase the radius of scatter attacks. Again, fantastic for click debuff type stuff. Um, you can increase the effect of scatter attacks, which is even better. Uh, there's multiple spot weaknesses, and there's an, an antagonist one. So uh, for general usage, I kind of put both of these in. There you go. Uh, I don't think there's any skins from Morgan or Talon yet. Um, sometimes this will show you'll be able to click and see them, but it doesn't. It doesn't always work right. It doesn't always work right. All right, time to talk about the Stabby Tabby. I don't even know if they're they're a Tabby Cat. It just it sounded good, so I went with it. Um, Rust on the Harbor is a Tabaxi Rogue uh, support and gold find. They actually have gold. They actually have gold find. So you can actually earn gold with a uh, rust on the harbor, and we didn't have a uh, a gold champion in this slot. They're in slot eleven, so it's a great pickup. Um, yeah, they're joining us uh, from uh, outside Xbox, but the, specifically their uh, affiliation is the Ox Venturers Guild, along with Prudence and Corazon. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Stabby Stabby is their is their ability now, their base attack. Now this isn't always the case. Um, once again, it doesn't, it doesn't tell us this right now because we're not landing the attack, but they actually change. They have two different basic attacks. Um, one is stabby stabby. They leap out and stab a random enemy with the rapier once. Um, and when he does this, he might lose his shiny gold piece. He might lose his shiny gold piece. His other is bang, bang. Uh, he shoots a random enemy with his pistols once from each pistol. Uh, so that's two hits, uh, but Rust can't lose his shiny gold piece when he attacks with his pistols. Um, so this will, there we go, now it's showing bang bang and it's switching back and forth. Um, so it could go either way. It could go either way. Um, let's, let's talk about the gold piece. Uh, I guess we'll get there, it's the second ability. Rust for hire is the first one. This is your gold find, so he increases your gold find by a percent. Uh, there is an item for this. 
uh, and I believe there's feats for this, so so you can actually get them some solid gold fine. Uh, right off the bat, they're better than most, if not all, of the companions of the hall for gold finds, so they do have a spot in your Azaka farming formations. So make sure you pick them up, because they do have a solid spot in your Azaka farming formations. One gold piece, here we go. Rust has a 2% chance to gain a shiny gold piece from any kill. While holding this gold piece, the effects of his Rust for Hire and Highest Bitter abilities are increased by a percent. Rust has a 3% chance to accidentally lose the gold piece each time he attacks with his rapier. So, you want Rust to have the gold piece. There's a nice visual indicator that we can't see because it's changing levels right as I want to talk about it. There it is. So it looks like a nice uh, shiny gold piece. That means uh, Rust has it. Rust has it. Uh, but he has a chance to lose it. So right now, while he has it, visually, um, I get more buffs and more gold. So that's what you want. You really want them to have more buffs and more gold as often as possible. Uh, highest bidder. Rust increases the champion or the damage of all champions by 100% for each order of magnitude of your gold find percentage. Oh boy. Uh, once again, folks, order of magnitude is that E number from scientific notation. Uh, right now, Eldas favor, I have E55. So I am getting a multiplier uh, based off highest bidder of E55. If we come over here to formation buffs, this is where you get to actually see what's going on. Um, oh, it's actually showing me E55. Oh, because I'm E57 with the gold find bonus in here, so... 57 orders of magnitude. We've got all the multipliers. My total bonus right now is an EO5% buff based off, uh, just based off the gold find that I have in this, uh, in this situation. So this will adjust based on your gold find. Now that doesn't mean you want to build a full gold find formation. It's just a nice bonus that ramps up. As you push further, it's going to let you push even further, right? Um... Keep it, keep it, keep that in mind. Um, so you don't necessarily build around it. It's just, it's great to have. Hello, friends. Rust one chance, Rust's chance for one gold piece to find a shiny gold piece from any kill is increased by 100% for each other Ox Ventures Guild champion in the formation, stacking additively and then applying multiplicatively. Basically, there's only two other Ox Ventures Guild, so. If you had them both in the party, instead of a 2% chance, it would go to a 6% chance. Not really huge at the moment, but as more uh, of the Ox Ventures Guild arrive, sure. Uh, you know, it'll be it'll get better. Uh, so right now, you want to you want to manipulate the shiny gold piece in other ways, not necessarily just by adding more uh, of his friends in. We do that with specialization, so uh, especially Shining is the first one. Uh, this increases the ability bonus of one gold piece by 100%. So it's just a nice a nice flat bonus if, you're, if you want to ride that RNG train. Um, uh, does he have the gold piece? Doesn't he have the gold piece? I don't know, but we're going to go with it. Uh, you go especially Shining. Close friends is if you're running an Ox Ventures grilled group. Uh, the ability bonus, again, you're still riding that RNG train of does he have the gold piece or doesn't he? Uh, but the ability bonus of one gold piece is increased by 100% for each other Ox Ventures Guild champion within two slots. So there is a placement restriction. Stacking multiplicatively. Uh, so this is this would give the biggest uh, bonus. But only when he has the coin. Only when he has the coin. Rust Reloaded tends to be what people use for... for well, definitely what you use for Azaka farming. Just throwing that out there but also for consistent uh, buffs. Because now he only attacks with his pistols uh, and can only lose his gold piece during his ultimate attack. So if you never fire off his ultimate, you never lose the gold piece, so you always keep those buffs going. That's why this is important for Zaka farming. You always have the max gold find buff. Um, I'm not going to choose this one today. Normally I would. What I'm going to do... Um, is I'm going to do close friends because we're going to talk about their achievement and I'm going to see if I can earn it uh, on stream. Uh, I have not tried yet. 
but we will try to build out a formation to to get their achievement on stream. All right, uh, cannonball is the ultimate. Cannonball is the ultimate. Uh, let's go look at that. I love this one. Russ loads him. I haven't seen this yet. Russ loads himself into a cannon and fires himself toward the enemies. I'm already in. I'm already in. Uh, dealing damage in a large area upon landing. When using his ultimate, Rust has a 40% chance of dropping a shiny gold piece midway through his flight. Makes sense. This chance is reduced by 2.5% for every 4.5 seconds of ultimate cooldown reduction he has. So basically, uh, it's going to go down uh, based on your gear. Based on your gear. Uh, yeah. So. Let's fire this off, because, I, again, I haven't seen this yet. Let's wait. This is a boss level. We'll go to the next level. Yeah, they had me at cannon, Nubles. Me too. Me too. All right. Yes! Oh, I'm, I'm so here for that. I'm so here for that. Uh, it does move kind of quick. I'm, I'm guessing even if I had speed on, it would be almost impossible to see. But, ah. Uh. Thank you for actually having him jump in a cannon and fire out. That's that's the best. I was worried he would just hop off screen and then fly through the air and they wouldn't have an actual cannon, but they had the cannon. Uh, CNE, I approve. I approve. Uh, okay, gear-wise, uh, he's got uh, one damage all champions item, uh, and that's because he has uh, one for all the other things. So one gold piece, you get an item. Rust for higher, you get an item. Highest bidder, you get an item. So he's he's got some solid items. Then ultimate attack damage and then an ultimate attack cooldown. Feet-wise, damage all champions. Uh, and then you get one gold piece. You get rust for higher. This is You're going to want to use the rust for higher ones uh, if you're gold farming. Uh, close friends and, and then highest bidder. So you can affect just about everything. Uh, but you do get two uh, for the gold farming, which is great. All right, uh, achievements. Let's collapse. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk about achievements real quick. Uh, the only achievements that you really, if, if you want to get achievements during an event, um, there is only one type of achievement that's only doable during an event, and it's these numbered ones. It's these numbered ones that want you to uh, reach a certain area goal in a free play. It can be any free play. It doesn't have to be for a specific champion. So basically, you, you want to try to get to 275 in any free play during an event um, if you want to try to grab all of these. Uh, you know, if you can't get that far in your, you know, if you're a new player and you can't get that far, don't worry about it. Focus on the others. Focus on the others. But these are the only ones that have to be done during the event. Uh, if we come down here, and we look, more gain. Uh, the, the other ones, like, get you know, unlock the champion, uh, get complete all three of their variants. This can be done in, in time gates. Uh, get gear for them can be done at any time. Uh, and then their specific one, which is about their abilities, uh, this can be done at any time as well. So well worth it for Morgane. Affect at least six champions with Morgane's paid up front, while it is buffed by at least 2,000% from your specialization choices. So again, remember, we talked about how you multiply... How each one has some numbers, and then you're going to be multiplying those numbers together. Uh, so you need to put together some of the larger, you need to build a formation that has uh, one uh, the potential to do one of the larger buffs. So maybe six adjacent in, in Mad Wizard or something, um, and then one of the others and let it ramp up, and then you'll get, and then this will trigger. So this is about formation building and specialization choices. Pretty straightforward. It'll pop automatically. Talons is scatter tax. Slow 20,000 enemies with scatter tax. Again, uh, this is one of those where you... you oh, oh, I got it! <laughs> I got one, my gold piece. Oh my god, I wasn't even trying. Alright. So much for that, folks. I was going to try to build a formation around getting my gold piece, but... The, the game just gave it to me. Uh, so that's how easy it is. But scatter tax, uh, basically put in Talon. Uh, you can have the one that increases the radius. That'll hit more enemies. Just got to use Talon. My gold piece, which I I got without even trying, uh, gained back Rust's shiny gold piece within three seconds of losing it. So it's really RNG. It's really RNG. What I was going to do, I'm going to go ahead and do this anyway. Uh, what I was going to do was try to build a, a formation 
that would get it back as quickly as possible. Um, so remember, uh, every time he attacks with his swords, he has a chance of dropping it. Um, but every time they kill something, you know, there's a kill, you get a chance of getting it back again. So what, what I was going to do was build a formation where, uh, where we used actually like whittle to speed up like, uh, adjacent attack speed, uh, and do some shenaniganry, uh, potentially to get, to get Russ's attacks up super fast. So he'd, he'd lose it quick. 999 second cooldown. That seems to be working correctly. That couldn't be a bug at all. Uh, God. how did I pull that off? How did I just break rust? They're not attacking either, so they believe that's real. What did I... What did I do? Okay, five seconds. There we go, okay. Nope. Alright, I don't know. I don't know. This is why we can't have nice things. Exactly. This is this is why. Uh, Alright, so uh, I, would do, I would do something like this, and then I would... I would throw in like a... I don't know, like an Ishi. Uh, well, no, no, I know what I want. I want Humon. I want Humon in a position where uh, where they're reducing uh, attack speeds, and then I want like Artemis in to make that an even bigger reduction. Uh, where do we want? Where do we want? Uh, do, 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 do. It's going to be down here. Please stand by. Yes, Yasa. So this is enabled right now. Reduce the base attack cooldown of champions adjacent to the Kobolds by a half a second. Um, so we want to do that, and we want to do some Artemis. And Artemis will observe off someone else. Do, 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 do. So right now Artemis is at 4.7 seconds, and then we just need to put a, any DPS champion next to them. Uh, now we're down to 1.18 seconds, and what that does next to next to Whittle is that also makes Rust 1.18 seconds. So now we're attacking super fast, and I would have done it like this. I would have done it like this, and I would have added in uh, Prudence. Uh, and where's Corazon again? Why can I never remember? Oh no. Corazon's here. Well, screw that. <laughs> but we'll put in Prudence. Uh, and that would increase that would increase the chance, but I would want the attack I want the attack speed uh, over the other person. So this is what I would have done to try to get to try to get my, one you know my gold piece. But I just got it by playing. So just look, just play with uh, Rust. Don't use the right hand specialization, uh, and you should get you should get that achievement pretty quickly. You should use uh, should get that achievement pretty quickly. We could use Selise instead of Humon. I mean, if that's the case, we could just use both. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So let's go. Let's do this. Bam. That should... No, we're capped at 1.18. Still at 1.18? Okay. All right, now we can do... Now we can do Prudence. All right. Boom. Boom. That's how we do it. All right, so there you go. There we go. So this gives me a super fast uh, attack speed uh, because of Artemis observing... Uh, and next to Whittle, and Whittle spreads it to Rust, and now Rust goes out and stabby, stabby. Stabby, stabby, bang, bang. Stabby, stabby, bang, bang. Over and over again. How did Selyse reduce attack speed? Selyse is uh, Divine Sense aggressive. Champions affected by Divine Sense have their base attack cooldowns reduced by a half a second. Uh, and because Artemis uh, observes that, if we go over to formation buffs, um, where's the Divine Sense? Here we go. Uh, it applies at a, a huge percentage of the original, so 
Um, I'm reducing my base attack by 161.7 seconds. Which it doesn't apply all of it. It just caps out at 1.18. It just caps out. Alright, I'm going to drink some water and, and pop another cough drop. And uh, we will come back and do all the, the question answering things. The question answering things. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, I don't remember what song we're listening to on the break. I think it's Egg Wilv and Gratz. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, be right back, folks. Yeah, the hideous laughter. Cackling through the trees Don't you know what she's after Love's a cruel disease Smell that fire on brimstone Sail around through the sky Princely demon of pleasure Lust is in his eye Chose nothing wrong Seed has been so I can't get enough of that song. That's a really good one. Uh, we're back. We're back. Uh, I forgot to take another cough drop. I did drink some water, though. Uh, I wanted to point out, somebody was saying, oh, if you put Ishii in, it goes even lower. Your attack speed goes even lower. Well, no, it doesn't. Ishii's attack speed can get down below one second. Because Ishii always, always, it's, it's one of her abilities, 
is she always attacks a quarter second faster than everyone else. That doesn't that doesn't change Rust's attack speed though. Wanted to throw that out there. Um, let's talk about something else. Somebody else asked, uh, uh, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna address it right now. Somebody else asked, how do you get more gains achievement? Um, again, you would want to do something with with the multipliers for paid up front, um, so that when you when you come over here, um, that you're getting uh, through the specializations, you're getting a, a solid a solid buff set. So let's reset the specializations. Boom. Um, so if if we were doing this, I would probably do like fine as is. Uh, I would do tight formation uh, to give me a large number, um, and then I would do. Uh, hold on. We do tight formation. Well, this isn't the best situation. Because tight formation is just going to give me the same 300. Uh, it really needs to be done in, done in like Mad Wizard. So you would have six adjacent. You would surround her with, with people. That's going to give you a solid buff. Uh, and then you would... Uh, what else did I already have leveled up? Here we go. Uh, you would try to surround her with as many people as possible. Uh, and then you would take tight formation. Uh, and then... Um, you know, calm under pressure of the long game. I think I did it with the long game. But this takes you being on a level where you're not killing anything for 60 seconds. So, you know, keep that in mind. Otherwise, you got to stack up like 20 enemies. But the but when those when those two bonuses multiply against each other, you end up with enough to trigger the achievement or you should end up with enough to trigger the achievement. That's the idea anyway. That is the idea. All right. Uh, let's go back to lining them all up in a pretty little row while we answer questions. While we answer questions. There are multiple ways to do it, but ideally you want to pick the biggest the biggest buffs from the specializations to trigger them. At least, Buck, I'm most interested in how to get Russ my gold piece achievement. I think I kind of... I think I kind of explained that. I mean, I kind of just got it on screen with on the stream without even trying, but I mean, that's one way to do it. Uh, just using, it's, you know, RNG is going to make it happen. But then the other way is, you know, speed up the attacks, right? Foolish Genius 89, how does Russ base attack work for qualifying for variants? Is it both melee and ranged or does he start with melee and get locked out of range only variants? That's a very good question. Uh, I have no idea. I do not know what the default is. Let me see if it's... Uh... In, the, in, the, in the champion spotlight, it specifically says he attacks once with bang bang, then drops his pistols and will attack with his rapier, which makes me feel like his default is ranged. Uh, but that's probably going to be a question. Uh, I'm trying to check and see if anybody's pulled that data. It's probably going to be a question for the developers. Or you're just going to have to test it out. Yeah, I'm not seeing that information anywhere, unfortunately. Uh, let me try one more thing. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it starts off with bang bang, so it's going to start with ranged. So it's going to start with ranged. I mean, that's and that's. I mean, if we want to get into the the weeds a little bit here, uh, Rust is like a pirate that's afraid of the water. Uh, pirates traditionally pull out. You fire your pistols as you're as you're engaging because they're one shot, one use, and you drop them or put them back, and then you pull out your melee weapon, and that's it. So it makes sense that he starts with ranged and he goes into melee. There you go. Uh, Ark Magellus, can you briv your way through the boss by swapping him in and out? Um, only if you have a 100% skip chance. Sure. 
which I do, but I, I personally don't like to use Brib that way. Uh, that's just not, I'm not a fan of having Briv jump tough bosses. I like, I, I play the game for the challenge of solving all the little puzzles. Um, and I feel like Briv cheats that part of the game for, for me specifically. You do whatever you want to do. Riff Raff, uh, I heard there was two specific variants in Avernus that would give you enough influence to unlock the first five tiers of perks. Which variants are those? Hmm. Um... Top of my head, I, I don't really remember. Relentless Peril, maybe, is one. And probably the Madness of Inogu might be another one. No, that they're done. They're stunned. Relentless Peril's probably one of them. Because um, what you're looking at is a uh, super high completion levels yeah we just did that that would come up to here maybe it's over here ragged dragon's crew ragged dragon's crew is another one because basically their restriction just adds more enemies but it doesn't really do anything so i would say maybe those two um but yeah i don't know if it's two does them all but you can you can try those you can try those. There's probably, somebody's probably got a list somewhere. Well, I know they do. I just don't know where what it is. But those are the two I think I, I, think I did, Ragged Dragon's Crew and Relentless Peril, uh, on my new player account when I was trying to do that. All right. Uh, where are we at? There we are. Uh, I was, I don't know why I answered that, these, that question. It wasn't related to the event, but <laughs> that's fine. Uh, let, let me try to find the other ones that are related to the event. Uh, Nathalus is a new player. How can I pass dead winter dodge and dead winter drama when don't have enough heroes to fill in the formations? You need more, uh, favor. You need to farm free plays for favor. You need to push super deep and get as much favor as you can. Uh, usually if you're in the E10 or higher range, uh, you'll be able to complete any of them. Usually, usually, uh, because by by over leveling your champions compared to where they would normally be, that can make up for um, the lack of champions in the formation. It's just you you potentially need to over level a lot depending on how many you're missing. Uh, Mars hypothesized, uh, Riff Raff, Mars hypothesized the variant Gold Devourer is potentially a great variant to get a all-time gold high from Regain. What do you think? Uh, I understand why Mars would say that because of the bonus to gold. However, the Devourer as a boss and the fact that you have to get them and the fact that you're running into them uh, more often nopes me right out of wanting to try that. But, I mean, it's it's definitely possible. Um, but man. Whew. Yeah. I just don't want to deal with a Devourer that often, to be quite frank. Um, this one, I don't think we have to answer. We already answered that. Uh, so Talon's formation is a wheel and Rust's formation is a boat? Mm hmm. That's a pretty rough looking boat, but sure, I would have said that's closer to an anchor. I would say that's closer to an anchor. They're not always uh, trying to visually... <sighs> okay, I fixed closed captioning. Apologies, folks. I turned it off during the break because I was singing a lot <laughs> with the song, uh, and it was not picking up the lyrics correctly. Um... Yeah, they're not necessarily visually trying to uh, represent that champion when they make these, but sometimes it works out that way. Is Morgane a super secret DPS? Uh, I have not heard of Morgane being a super secret DPS. She does not buff herself. Now, sometimes, like, Paulton's kind of a super secret DPS at times, 
He doesn't buff himself either, but his scaling works well. I haven't seen more gain really come out that way, though. Unfortunately. Uh, Delramian, uh, does Talon not put down his uh, scatter attacks when he's not hitting an enemy? Correct. Yeah. If you notice, when if we're killing with, right now, we're killing with familiars, uh, there's no scatter attacks going down. So if I remove that familiar and we kill uh, just with Talon, you'll see him start to draw there. There, now there's scatter attacks. So they actually have to attack someone. It's not kill them. It's They have to actually land the attack. Um, and when I have a familiar out, they, they don't land it at all. Uh, Rookie 9, so reversal of fortunes with Talon would be the best choice if I'm DPSing with Jarlaxle. Exactly. Exactly. And actually, that's canonically, is I, I believe, canonically, uh, that is why reversal of fortune is, exists, because Talon was part of Jarlaxle's crew in their, like, in their home game, and, and Talon and Jarlaxle had a thing, and so, you know, you know, sometimes you, you know, you like bad boys, apparently. So, you know, Talon will buff Jarlaxle <laughs> if you choose that specialization. Uh, Suzuki Boy, does point and shoot increase rust for hire? Someone remind me what point and shoot is? Uh, it's, it's an ability. I, there's too many abilities in the game for me to remember. What is point and shoot? It's an item name. Oh, okay. I mean, if that's what it says. Oh, here we go. Point and shoot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the item for rust for hire. So, yes. Sorry. I really don't remember item names. Uh, <laughs> there's over, there's like, what, 90 champions in the game or more. Uh, each one has uh, 24 items. Yeah, I mean that's it's it says right on it. That's the effect of uh, rest for hire. Uh, Sensei, uh, could you make an updated Azaka Gold Farm with Rust? I did yesterday on stream. Uh, the only champion I didn't have in the formation uh, was Jarlaxle because my Jarlaxle is on trial. I mean, uh, in trials. <laughs> I'm just going to start using on trial from now on, though. Yeah, he's on trial. He's got jury duty for the week. Uh, Gordas, does Rust have to get the kill to get it back? I am. I don't think so, no. Because I got that achievement, uh, and I was killing with familiars, so... I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Uh, do, 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 do. Does Shandy's Rush speed ability affect the Recover Shiny coin achievement? No. Shandy's uh, ability speeds up the game overall. Uh, so you're just making things go faster, but that doesn't that doesn't directly affect how fast. I mean, it's going to reduce the amount of time it's going to take you to get that achievement because it's speeding the game up. Oh, hey, there was the there's the gold piece. Oh, it's cool. It shows up on the ground. I did not see that before. Um, so I mean, if you're trying to farm the achievement, it's gonna it's gonna make it happen faster, uh, simply because it's speeding the game up. But it doesn't it doesn't directly affect uh, your ability to get that one gold piece. Yeah, we did that. That's no, that's a dupe. Oh, that was empty. Uh, all right, we'll go back and do general questions. So general questions, folks, if you've got general questions about the game, or if you do still have questions about Midwinter, or uh, any of the champions in it, or past champions from it. Yeah. Um, Maniac Clown, in the process of working up to getting Dragon Bait, I hit soft cap and I found my wall seemed to be around level 505. What does this mean for subsequent campaigns and the ability to earn enough favor to get the higher level blessings, especially the globals from them? Well, it, it means you actually have to get power from somewhere other than favor. Um, I know early on people tend to use favor as a bit of a crutch 
They just focus on getting as much favor and overpowering things with favor. Um, and they might ignore the other sources of power in the game. Well, uh, you know, you do so at your own peril. You need to get things like uh, you need to unlock your Modron core and start leveling that up. You need to get unlock the patrons and start getting their perks. You need to wor work on uh, gearing up your champions in full epics. Um, uh, you know, things like that, uh, you know, are going to help you push further in the harder campaigns, uh, specifically uh, Descent into Avernus and Icewind Dale and, and those places that are the hard campaigns. You have to have that kind of power on your account as a whole to be able to push past where your uh, where your favor gets you once you soft cap your champions. Um, SC kid, is that a real beard? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, doorbell streams. What is that wild offer out of curiosity? And do you have root beer today? Uh, I, I don't have any root beer on my desk, but I will be having some w with lunch later. Oops, that was. Maybe that's why that was zeroed out. Did I accidentally delete something? I probably did. Oh well. Uh, what is the wild offer? The wild offer was like an Ala skin. Yeah, Stormbringer Ala. Eh. I don't need the skin. I don't need the skin. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So that's done. Uh, what is click debuff? Arc Magellus. Click debuff is a uh, high level pushing strategy. When I say high level, what I mean is high favor. You need like roughly around E30 at a minimum. Um, and you need uh, and you need a bunch of debuff champions. Uh, and the idea here is that, uh, yeah, what we were just talking about, it was just the soft cap, the champion soft cap. When you live, when you level them up to the point where like, see how there's these upgrades, eventually there's going to be a circle with a line through it, which means there's no more upgrades available for that champion, which means you can't really scale their power anymore the way you were doing beforehand. Um, but leveling up your click damage always, it continues to scale. Uh, up and up and up. The more the more gold you have, the more you can level up your click damage, and it and it doesn't currently stop. Um, so there, you reach a certain point when you have enough favor, uh, and you have enough debuff champions that you can level up your click damage, and then click kill enemies uh, with familiars on the field, uh, and push further than you would with an actual pushing formation. Um, you do have to, obviously you have to have a lot of debuff champions, but you also have to have a solid gold find formation and know how to Azaka farm um, because you're going to have to, you're going to have to stop at some point uh, and Azaka farm to earn more gold, to level up your click damage. Uh, that's just kind of this thing that's going to happen. And then you're going to click up to the point where you can't click anymore. And then you're going to have to stop and, and Azaka farm again. And then, yeah, so uh, it requires a combination of Azaka farming and a lot of uh, debuff champions and a lot of favor. Um, yeah, but it, it doesn't work on, it doesn't work everywhere. Uh, but it is good for you know potentially for just building for me, uh, building favor in free plays that don't have lots of difficult things. Like it doesn't work in this event because. You, you can't, there's, you don't get enough time against the Devourer to stack up all the debuffs you need to be able to click kill it, right? So it is, it is limited. It is limited in its effectiveness, but, um, but it is still s useful in some places. Uh, yeah. Okay, I did that one. I don't remember what happened here. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, Niskis, is there an approximate date for the new Champions of Renown pack to be released on? Uh, that's not information I can share with the public. When uh, CNE wants to uh, tell you that's happening, they'll tell you that's happening. But yeah, I mean, we have finished uh, year four. We are into year five on the Champions, so there should be a Champions of Renown year four pack at some point in the future. Suzuki so, Boy, where can I read all lore for Forgotten Realms? Uh, nowhere. I don't think that's it. I don't think all the lore for the Forgotten Realms is in any one place. That's too big of an ask. That's way too big of an ask. 
uh, the Forgotten Realms uh, technically were created by uh, Ed Greenwood. Um, so he is the keeper of all that lore, but obviously there's lots of Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms books. Like there's novels you can read. There's there's the campaign books that have lots of notes and things and, and adventure books. And um, yeah, I mean, you can hit up a wiki. Uh, but even that's not necessarily going to have all the lore. Ed Greenwood, if you follow Ed Greenwood on Twitter, uh, he answers questions for people about the lore. Like, what's the current state of this city? Or what's going on with this person? And it's stuff that's just not going to appear in any books or campaigns or stuff, and he just lore dumps on people. Um, because that world lives in his head. Um, but yeah, you're not going to find it all in, in one place, but you can find lots of it in different places. You can find lots of it in different places. Uh, vitamin jar is dritzed worth rushing to unlock. Um, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, dritz should be, I, I set up a, in my, in my new player reference on, on my uh, guide page. Um, I break, I break progress in the game down into milestones and dritz is the first milestone because it kind of, he, he kind of functions as a goal for you on the Sword Coast when you first start out. Like, I need to push down and get here um, and unlock Dritz. Uh, and then get enough favor. I'm just going to point this out. And then get enough favor to get Gem Hunter, the global Gem Hunter blessing, while you're in the Sword Coast. That, that should Those are your first goals in the Sword Coast and in the game, in my opinion. Um then you then you hop over to Tomb of Annihilation and you start doing Tomb of Annihilation stuff. Um, if you want more about that, hit up my uh, hit up my new player reference. Uh, here's a link to all the guides. Uh, yeah, but is he worth rushing to unlock? I mean, as a champion, eh. what he's going to do is he's going to give you uh, another uh, another champion in slot nine. You'll start off with Makos. So that'll give you Dritz. Uh, I mean, if you got more gain in this event, that'll give you three. But so that sets you up for both split the party one and split the party two, because you need two champions in every slot for split the party one, and you need three for split the party two. Those are going to get you those uh, super awesome Modron cores for free once you beat that adventure. Um, so that's kind of why you want to. That's kind of why you want to do that. Uh, Xanthfan, why is Archon not listed as gold when his gear improves gold find? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, because it's probably because it's a gear and not an ability. His 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 gear didn't always give gold, and they changed it to give gold at one point. Um. Yeah, I don't know. They haven't always been great about gold find. Like what? Like there's there's obviously some kind of restrictions as to whether they're going to put gold the gold roll on a champion or not. Um, like I said, they put it on Morgaine and she did, you know, she doesn't necessarily like she drops a second set of gold if she kills her target. She's not a DPS. Uh, and then she, she buffs based off gold. And that, so they basically gave it for that. Like, so they have, they have weird reasonings behind why they're going to put certain roles. And I don't, I, again, I'm not the one that makes the decision. So I don't know. Negative gold find is gold find. <laughs> Uh, Royal B, how do you get so many purple items? Uh, sorry, I'm new to the game. Oh, don't, you yeah, know, don't apologize. Uh, it's, it's just opening chests, right? Um, purple items, uh, epics come from gold chests, uh, varieties of different gold chests. So opening lots and lots of gold chests will get you, uh, epics over time. Um, I can't remember what the odds are of getting them, but uh, gold chests have a pity timer. So it's like uh, built in bad luck protection. So you're at least going to get an epic in every 10 chests. <coughs> oh, dang it. And every dent in how oh, many In every 10 chests, say hey, I finished it. Um but uh but gear like during this event you you can get uh specifically named gold chests for the event champions. Um there are patron chests that that you can get uh eventually when you unlock patrons. That will drop epics for a, a large group of champions that qualify for that patron. So, yeah. Uh, so you know, every ten you know gold chests you open, you're, you're guaranteed one epic, but you might get more. 
You might get more. All of that stuff gets tracked uh, in your inventory. Like if I come over here to the chest screen, uh, I can see that my gold Mert patron chests have a, are now the pity timer has moved. That's what these for this purple bar is. So now I'll get one in the next eight chests. Uh, for regular gold chests, it's one in the next five. Oh, I need to finish opening these. I only opened like half of them yesterday. Hey, there's the Morgane chest I got. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's going to keep, it's going to keep track of those for, for chests that are going to offer epics. It keeps track. If you notice the Electrum chest doesn't have one of those bars, it's because it can't drop uh, purple gear. Neither can silvers. So it's just, it's overtime. Uh, I've been playing the game for four and a half years. So it's one of those long-term goals is getting, uh, full epics on all your champions. I, I do have that. Um, but it took a long time, uh, and a lot of work to get there. Maniac Clown, how long has he been growing the beard? I, I don't know. I don't really track that kind of stuff. Uh, Shevik, uh, from what you said earlier, the retired legacy champions, Timegate champions, is what you should probably refer to them as uh, from now on, have one achievement you cannot get in Timegates. Uh, correct. Correct. That's the... Um, that's this. But again, it's not... It's not their achievement. If you'll note, nothing about these ref these numbered uh, achievements reference a champion at all. It doesn't belong to them. It arrived with them. That's the way you have to think about it. Um, so only like Regis, there's unlocking Regis. There's getting uh, doing all three of Regis's variants. There's getting a, a piece of gear for each of Regis's uh, slots, and then there's uh, use all of all six of Regis's specialization combinations. All of these named things for the champion can be done in a time gate. It's just these these things were, that are referencing uh, Dead Winter Day free plays. These This specifically means in an event free play. Even though there's a free play in, in a time gate, it, that doesn't count. It has to be in the event only. Um, so just to clarify just to clarify uh but yeah and i don't I, I guess i don't like retired because because it's not like they're sitting on a couch somewhere and they're not adventuring anymore um and legacy uh we have legacy as a term in the game and it's uh it's referencing um achievements uh so there are here we go legacy achievements and legacy means you can't get them anymore and they don't offer any bonuses Right, like these were achievements that got changed uh, when they changed the champions. So if you'd earned them, they just dropped them into this legacy button. There was one more that I didn't bother getting for Calliope. Um, so I don't, I don't like using those terms. Uh, and so I just, I refer to them as time gate champions because guess what? That's where you get them now. Um, they're still linked to those events, and in, in, because that's what they arrived in, they're just not available in the event anymore. Uh, oh, and the old fire breath potions. Well, the old fire breath potions are expired. They're past their expiration date. Uh, this basically expired means you can't get them anymore, period. Uh, I guess they could have called this legacy, but they chose expired because there's still fire breath potions in the game. Um, they just work differently now. They just work differently now. Uh, what are the not core evergreen champions? So I, I personally differentiate core and evergreen as two different sets. I know that the developers like to just refer to them all as evergreen at times. I do core and evergreen. So core are your starting 12 champions that you get default with the game. Uh, your evergreen uh, are... Uh, or everything else that you can unlock uh, at any point in time. So Hitch, which you get from the newsletter, uh, Dritzt from the Sword Coast, Azaka and Dragon Bait from Tomb of Annihilation, Alcoria from Waterdeep Dragon Heist, Rhea from Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, uh, Xerophon from uh, Icewind Dale, Rim of the Frostmaiden, and Nerds from the Nerds uh, XD&D promotion. The Nerds XD&D promotion, so... So we have eight. We have eight evergreen champions currently, uh, by my calculations. Eight evergreens, twelve core. 
again, Hitch, you just go up here and you click on the newsletter and then you sign up with a valid email address and make sure it doesn't go into your spam folder and then you get Hitch. And then you get a, and you also get a free gold chest every week. Uh, Chakota, while in click debuff, can I use a small fire breath potion to pass a tough boss? No! No, you cannot. Uh, it wouldn't do anything. A, it wouldn't do anything for you. Uh, but but B, fire breath potions, if you have an active fire breath potion, you can't click debuff at all. Because the thing about uh, the thing about debuffs is you can't double dip with a debuff. This is something that, that was broken about the game for a long time and that they fixed. Because the debuff... Fire Breath is based off Bud, and Bud already takes into account the debuff on an enemy. Because Bud, your base ultimate damage, is based off your attack on an enemy, and your attack on an enemy already includes the debuff. So you've already counted the debuff once. Anything that's going to uh, be based off Bud, if it hits a debuffed enemy, uh, isn't going to then do increased damage again. That's double dipping. Uh, so, yeah. So no, fire breath potions actually completely disable click debuff, um, because it basically I know it says it's supposed to add uh, a few seconds of bud to your your clicks, but it basically replaces the click with bud based damage. Um, so you don't want to have any fire breath potions going when you're when you're click debuffing. Uh, plus, you'd have to change your formation anyway for fire breath to do anything. Because if you're in a click debuff formation, you're not in a pushing formation, so you're not setting a very high butt at all. Um, and yeah, it just doesn't make sense to bounce back and forth between those two. The whole point is you're supposed to push with a pushing formation as far as you possibly can, including fire breaths if you want, and then you switch to click debuff. And that lets you go further. Because uh, like with my setup currently, uh, like I'll get my... I could get my uh, click damage up into you know into the 200s e 200s in click damage, um, and the debuffs allow me to click kill things that are e 100 health a little over e 100 health higher. So I can click I can click kill things that have like e 300 plus health, because um, that's how much the debuff applies. So. My bud would still be in the E200s. We were doing that. We I pointed this out yesterday on stream. My bud would be in the E200s with a click debuff formation, and a fire breath potion would do nothing. Uh, Eric Magella's Oral's Blessing costume party gives 20% DPS buff per skin. Is it worth it? I don't. I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. I don't know. I mean, I've got 114. How do I have 114 skins? Apparently, I've collected 114 skins over four and a half years. Um, but that's, I mean, it's 20% additive. So what is that? 2,280%? No. When it's an additive, it's just a nice little addition, but it's not like, it's not, you know, super strong. Uh, it's when it says multiplicative that it's it's kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal. So, yeah, I mean, this is just, eh. If you have them, great. If you don't, yeah, no big deal. Um, I mean, eventually, you know, you at least want to pick up the... Uh, you at least want to pick up the gem skins, but... But, yeah, I mean, 2,000% sounds like a lot, but... I don't know. Uh, when you're when you're trying to get every last bit of damage, sure, but like I'm not gonna throw cash at a game just to get a little more damage from a blessing like that, right? Uh, I collect skins because I like the skins. Uh, we don't have any for these champions, but normally. Uh, Star Chaser 43. Has anything been said about a 2022 hidden combination uh, list? Uh, no. Just that it's hidden still. Uh, that's a that was that's traditionally been a Dylan thing. Um, and Dylan only hosts Bardic Inspiration, so we haven't been able to ask him, it, but that's a quick thing, you know, the music we were listening to at the break and at the beginning of the show and the music we'll listen to at the end all comes from Bardic Inspiration. Bardic Inspiration returns on Tuesday, barring unforeseen difficulties. Uh, I think Jason's been off, uh, being a professional dungeon master recently, so he'll, but he'll be back. 
uh, supposedly on Tuesday to do more Bardic Inspiration stuff. So I would ask Dylan on Tuesday. He's the one that usually does that. Uh, Gravel Lights, can you still get nerds? What was the promotion? Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, you have to buy nerds, the candy, and then take a picture of your receipt. You need the receipt. Uh, and then submit the picture to a website. And then they, and with an email address, and then they email you the code. And you put the code in the game, and then you get the nerds. Uh, that promotion will run until the end of March. Uh, and then at some unknown point after that, nerds will get added to the gem store, and you'll be able to buy them with gems. You'll be able to buy them with gems. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mars, I just read your, your comment. Uh, thank you, but yeah, I mean, you know, they, they have to decide to give it to me. Uh, that's all the questions everybody had, so I guess we're just going to end the stream early? No, we don't do that. We don't do that. We got 24, we got about 20 more minutes, folks. Uh, so I will start reading questions straight from chat. Um, do, 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 do. Any clue how much gems nerds will cost? No idea. No idea. Uh, yeah. Hmm. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get wait. Uh, Riff Raff, you had one more, but it didn't get snagged. Uh, I mean, say it again. I guess if it was like a duplicate, like if it was something somebody else asked. Oh, here we go. So even though I completed Elturel's last stand, I've not done much with patrons. Or Modron cores. Where are good places to find plans or layouts for the pipe game? There's a channel. Uh, there's a channel in the in the Discord, uh, specifically called Modron Core Layout, uh, and they have a web tool that's like I believe it's pinned in the links. Um, so, using the like the combination of those two is good. I do have some video guides, but really it's. Here's the thing, like you you can't just get a fixed layout uh, and then apply it like a like a formation, right? Because you would have to have all those pieces, and the hardest part, uh, the hardest part of uh, sorry, there was a weird comment in chat. The hardest part of the pipe game is collecting the pieces. So you have to learn how to build the pipe game yourself. Because your pieces are going to be different from other people's, but there, are, there, are, you can. There are some people who are super helpful in that channel, because you can basically screenshot your pieces and then they'll try to build them in that web tool. Um, yeah. Uh, is your announcement stream on Tuesday? Announcement stream? I mean, I'll have Idle Champions. Uh, we'll be doing. Uh, we'll be streaming Idle Champions. Oh, I guess my my calendar has changed. Maybe this is what my schedule is going to be changing. Uh, next week, we're probably going to do it more like we did this week. So idle chatter is probably moving to, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. So right after Mars is guiding hand, uh, you will now be able to just, you know, hop over to my channel, uh, and join me for some idle chatter. Oh, hold on. I'm trying to fix my schedule here to make sure. And then we will, uh, raid, uh, champions of psychology after that. And then Thursday's, uh, idle chatter patron edition, uh, same time, 9 a.m. Uh, and I'm probably going to announce for next week, uh, I believe we'll be doing a, a Saturday stream. Uh, I think we'll start noon on Saturday. So we'll, d we'll do the tutorial show like we're doing now. And then later that day, I will, I will hop live, uh, hop on live, uh, and we'll play a little bit of idle champions. And then I'm going to have a sponsored stream after that. That is not idle champions related. So I won't talk about it here. Uh, but that should be interesting. That should be interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will probably, we'll probably just talk that day about what, like next Saturday on my channel, we'll, uh, we're just going to go in and that's, that's when we'll, you'll find out what game I'm playing. Uh, or we'll see. We'll see. Foolish Genius, what do you think the first item in the gem store priced at 1 million gems is going to be? 
either mine or Mars's evergreen champion, right? <laughs> That's the way they'll do it, folks. They'll put they'll they'll finally add me or Mars to the game, uh, but they'll put us behind a gem wall of one million gems, uh, and all of the haters will say that uh, we're not worth it. We're not worth it. And I'll probably say it too. I'll be like a million gems. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> No, I still think if they ever add us to the game, uh, I want to be a I want to be a Twitch drop. I want to be a Twitch drop. Uh, but yeah, so it's for a short period of time, I'll be a Twitch drop, and then I'll get added to the gem store, and it'll be one million gems. No, probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. Uh, but I will. I will. If 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 Codename Entertainment ever uh, approaches me to add Garwar or any of my other characters to the game. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, oh, geez. And now I'm, now I'm blanking. I need to play more D and D uh, apparently because, uh, because I forgot the name of my, uh, Minotaur, the storm coming, the most epic Minotaur ever, the storm coming. Uh, if we ever added Garwar or the storm coming to the game. Uh, yeah, I, I would fight. I would be like, I want, I want to be uh, a Twitch drop. I don't want to be a Twitch drop. Uh, I see Garwar and Mars cameo appearance riding a pixie on a boss level. Uh, canonically, uh, I would need to be riding a boulette. I would need to be riding a boulette. Mars knows why. Anybody that's seen uh, uh, Twice in a Blue Moon knows why. Go back and watch our uh, our D and D games. Uh, let's see. What's for lunch today? Obligatory food question. I don't know. I have no idea what I'm having for lunch today. I haven't got that far. I haven't got that far. Uh, Krenrick, I've only just started click debuffing when I Azaka farm. Do I switch freely to lawful? Technically, you should switch to whatever, yeah, whatever would make it best to apply the requisition lucky break. Uh, I don't usually do it because I don't min-max that much, but technically, yes, you should if you want to get the most out of it. Sharkfighter9000, uh, sorry if I already answered this, uh, but are all the new patron perks unlockable in the current state of the game? Uh, yes. There is enough influence to unlock all the patron perks. Now, whether you can earn it or not, whole other question. There are people, I know there is at least one person that, ha that has done all of the, uh, all of the patron parks. You are now having tacos. I don't have taco stuff here. And I'm kind of trying to quarantine because a friend of mine uh, got the COVID. Uh, and I saw them at a distance uh, a few days ago and, and before they uh, tested positive. So now I'm like, mm, I'm just going to stay home for a while. Uh... Star Chaser, do you have any speculation about a familiar quest, which is the new uh, TTRPG live play that starts this Monday, this Monday on this channel, uh, that you wouldn't mind sharing? So specula speculation about a familiar quest. From what I saw uh, Todd post, Todd was tweeting last night. I don't know why he does it so late. Uh, well, I guess it's late in my time, but he will, he will, he will post it. He posted out just some random tweets about uh, a familiar quest uh, coming oh, hold on what time is it is it 3pm maybe is it 3 Mars is it 3pm Pacific is it like 3 to 5 hold on there's literally only been like one tweet so if you haven't heard about it yet folks it's it's not shocking it just says, on January 17th, we are starting a new actual play show. Dungeon Master Todd Kenricks takes a new cast of characters on a familiar quest. Stay tuned for more. But I believe it's going to be uh, Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon. I don't know the exact time yet. Uh, times may change. So, you know, Monday, they'll probably tweet out Monday uh, and post in the Discord and stuff. Uh, which channel? This channel. The CNE Games channel. Um... My assumption, I have not, no one, no one discussed this with me at all. This is not, that's not how this works. No one's, 
they don't come to me and go, "Hey, we're starting a new channel, a new a new thing." I literally found out Friday, yesterday, when uh, when they tweeted it out while my stream was live. I looked over and I saw the tweet and I said, "Oh, I guess I should promote this." And then Dylan pinged me in Discord with it, uh, but didn't give me anything other than the link to the tweet. So my assumption is that all the characters are playing familiars. Right? It's called a familiar quest, folks. Uh, I think all the care, all the all the players are are playing as familiars, and Todd's leading them on adventures. Um, yeah, what familiars? Who knows? But I think that's what's I think that's what's happening. <coughs> oh, there we go. With all right. Um, I have, I have seen people play like, uh, their pets before, uh, in games like where they, you know, their characters have, have pets or familiars. And then they, they then would play as those. Uh, and I thought, I found that to be hilarious. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I see baby Tia what better be in that. Well, I mean, we don't have a baby Tia what. We do have a baby Tia Mott. Uh, I will say I just watched The Eternals uh, the other day. Uh, I thought I found it enjoyable. Uh, and the the bot, like the big thing that they're, spoilers, the big thing they're, uh, they're trying to stop is called Tia Mutt. And I'm like, so close. So close. Uh, Moose Stew. Hmm. I used all my bounty contracts to get tokens. I'm about 50% epic with Talon and Rust. Should I use more contracts as they come or save them for the next event? That's kind of up to you. Um, I burn all of them on the uh, on the first day of the event. Uh, and then any I earn after that, I save for the next event. Uh, but it's really kind of up to whatever you want to do with in that regard. Um, for me, I just find it easier to track that way so that's just what i chose and what i've stuck to uh but i don't know that it, i mean it's not like one's better than the other uh to mordred uh, does the attack speed manipulation via whittle have any impact on azaka's tiger's dogs for azaka gold farming it shouldn't no it shouldn't because they should have their own attack speed it's unrelated to azaka but but I've never really tried because I don't like that would just make uh would make her farm faster, but it wouldn't make it wouldn't give more gold. And I would rather have more gold because I can just run some speed potions and be done in like 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Um. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Nazgul666, uh, you set off and we should do event champions equally. Yeah. But as a relatively new player, do you think I'll be able to full epic everybody in less than a year? I'm not sure. I oh, mean, like before the event comes around? Hard to say. As I see it, if I'm lucky, if I can full epic even one. Yeah, full epicing a champion isn't something as a new player that is your goal. Your goal is to unlock each of the champions and then just to get gear for them. Uh, like I said, I, I, I recommend uh, streaming them uh, like or, or, or gearing them as equally as possible because you never know who you're going to need in a variant coming up in the future. Um, so at least, you know, get them some kind of gear. Some people now with Electrum chests, because Electrums will eventually get everybody blues, uh, say, oh, just focus one champion to get try to get them full epic, but... Getting full epic, it takes a lot of chests. Uh, I did it with Rust this time with 42. 42 gold chests, but that was just really good luck. Um, but that took a lot of tokens to get 42 gold chests. That took uh, like over 200,000 event tokens. So trying to get full epic isn't something that I think you, you try to do as a newer player. Um, just trying to get at least a couple... like. A, Try to get at least enough gold chests to, to get that first pity timer and get at least one epic. You should be able to get one epic on every champion. 
Uh, and then, you know, trying to get that second epic on each one is, I think, then what you try to do after that. But, yeah. Um, I don't know that you really necessarily focus on, like I said, full epics, especially for event champions, is a very long-term goal. It's a very long-term goal, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to require a combination of time gates for that champion and patron chests uh, to get there. Uh, I missed a bit earlier, so you probably already covered it. Which champ should we concentrate on this event? I mean, again, all of them. All of them. Uh, what's the verdict? early verdict on Rust? Rust is a great uh, addition to your Azaka farms for gold find. Uh, outside of that, they're just, eh, and eh, okay, support. They're not overpowered as a support. They're just, okay. They're a little better if you have lots of favor, but not a lot, not a lot better. Uh, if you and Mars were in the uh, gem store, if your champions were in the gem store, this is from Fearless Genius, would you get gem royalties for each purchase? Hmm. I'm liking this idea, Mars. Uh, <laughs> the Lurking Rider. Uh, also, surely you and Mars should be patrons, no? Uh, I don't think we would get to be patrons. That's a lot. Patrons are super powerful uh, beings in the, uh, or at least, you know, super influential beings in the D&D &D, uh, universe. Uh, I always, uh, I mean, I think I know Mars always wanted to be a champion. Uh, I made a uh, uh, an event patron, uh, kind of, uh, fan, you know, my creation of what Gar would look like as an event patron. Uh, but that doesn't mean that that's how I that that's how it showed up. It just kind of felt like, hey, everybody was making uh, uh, themselves or their characters as champions, and I decided to to see what it would be like to make Garwar as a patron. That's in the Fan Design Forge in the Discord. Uh, you'd have to search for it, but it's still in there. Uh, last couple of questions here, and then we're gonna head out. Uh, Phoenix Forest, is it worth using up all my bounty contracts for this event if next event seems really worth with Havilar and Humon? Rather new to the game and can't accumulate that many contracts yet. Um, if you don't want to burn your bounty contracts at this event and you want to wait for next event, that's fine. Uh, Humon would be the, the one you would be focusing on for try to get for speed. Uh, Havilar, Havilar's nice, but uh, she, she doesn't necessarily need items for her speed effect. Uh, Humon's the one that really gives, really gives return on the investment. Uh, and what you'd be hunting for is his rainbow eggs, his rainbow eggs, I believe, I believe. Yes, this one. So the carefully balanced ability is slot four. This is what you would want an epic on, uh, if you can next event. So if you want to wait and do that, sure, sure. Uh, Wandering Breath, Najim, which is Baylos the Jinn, grants you a wish, and no tricksiness, that you can change one thing about the game and CNE will have to do it. Oh, what do you wish for? Wandering Bereft. One thing about the game. Huh. That's rough. Mars in all caps. Uh... <laughs> wow. Okay. Mars in caps says an in-game encyclopedia for monsters, chests, everything. So what Mars wants, I want to put this. This is what Mars typed in. Apparently what Mars wants is Garwar's Guide to Everything and Idol Champions. Is that, is that, is that where we're going, Mars? Mars wants Gar Wars Guide to Everything in Idle Champions. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I will I will say that uh, there is a precedent for this in games. Uh, I played a game, uh, which is where a lot of uh, people originally knew my name from, uh, called Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning, uh, which was an MMO. And in Warhammer, in War is what it was called, uh, there was something called the Tome of Knowledge. Uh, and the Tome of Knowledge tracked everything you did in the game. It's where you found kills on monsters. It's where you found all your achievements. It's when you unlocked like this and that. And all the things that you did were tracked in the Tome, in the tome of Knowledge. Um, 
So a feature like that for this game would be interesting. However, I'm not sure uh, how much um, of that is already tracked in the background. So sometimes adding things like that, if they weren't already tracking those numbers, you know, you'd have to start. You'd have to start fresh. I don't. I don't know. Change one thing about the game. The problem is, is there's. There are lots of little types of things I would like, like quality of life things I would like. And I, like thinking about like one major change. I mean, I guess I could go for a Gar Wars guide to everything. Uh, as long as it included uh, all of the stories. Like, so it would have to have, you know, uh, all of the journal stories. Uh, because I can't, I, I can't, I, I play this game idle. And I've basically missed so much of the storyline. They put they they have really great writers, but I, I mean, if I'm if I'm playing AFK, I miss all of the story, uh, and I don't have an easy way to go back and read it. So, yeah, adding that would be nice. Uh, removal of the base DPS. Like I said, there's lots of little quality of life things I would want, so it's hard to say. What if you and Mars were added as familiars? Uh, I don't know how that would work. I don't know how that would work. Uh, wait, there's a storyline, everyone. Well, there is, and I've read some of the stories, but not all of them, unfortunately. Not all of them. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think that's pretty much everything. I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, so. Uh, return on uh, streams return on Monday uh, like I said there's a new stream uh, at some point in the afternoon but uh, Mars will uh, guide you 7am uh, and Mars streams at 7am Monday through Friday on this channel it, yeah 7am uh, and then uh, weekly patronage will be in the afternoon and then at some point at some point, a familiar quest will be will be there too. Um, I just don't know when that is yet. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. We're going out. I think so. We had Igwolf and Grotz. So this is probably Orcus and the Raven Queen. I think is the next song uh, that we're going out on. Uh, so enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe. Uh, stay healthy. Uh, bye, everyone. I was summoning an army of dead While you were feeling mortal hearts with your dread Then I looked into your eyes And I knew we had to be together Is our hatred just mistaken love? I'm fighting merely passion and lust Then you gazed into my soul And we knew that we could roll My sweet red and queen, you're the one I want to be with tonight. We make a show of fighting face to face, but at night I only want your embrace. You made my dead heart beat, and you trapped me with a feather. Let me put my one to the side. And behind that mask where you hide We will gaze across our time And know what's yours and mine And treasure Secret lovers undercover On the land of hell You know I miss your sweet kiss When I'm in the abyss Why don't you come out of the shadow of the bell My sweet and clean, you're the one I want to be with tonight. None of them can see what you were, don't understand you the way I do. I've seen the pain beneath, and it's one that I will lease for you. Sweet, secret lovers on the cover of the land. Yeah.
Queen.